the pharmacologic treatment of stuttering, and its neuropharmacologic basis. Stuttering, classified as a DSMV psychiatric condition, lacks FDA-approved medication. Evidence shows that dopamine antagonist medications reduce stuttering severity. Stuttering shares traits with Tourette's syndrome, such as onset in childhood, a 4 to 1 male to female ratio, and reaction to dopamine related medications. Advances in neurophysiology have guided stuttering treatment. A newer medication, selective D1 antagonism, is under FDA trials. D1 antagonists have unique side effects compared to D2 antagonists, offering new treatment options. Vena et 2 inhibitors also present a promising treatment avenue by altering dopamine transmission. Childhood onset fluency disorder, commonly known as stuttering, is marked by speech disruptions like repetitions and prolongations. These disturbances can be accompanied by motor movements and can vary in severity, often linked to the anticipation of stuttering, causing anxiety and social limitations. The recent DSMV classification changed stuttering to childhood onset fluency disorder, adding criteria for avoidance and anxiety. Disfluency generally starts in early childhood, with most children showing symptoms by age 6. While many outgrow it, some continue to face challenges into adulthood. Stuttering is considered a disorder when it impairs function with early intervention showing the best outcomes. It's closely associated with other DSMV diagnoses, including social anxiety, mood disorders, and personality disorders, especially in adults, impacting their quality of life and access to treatment. The exact cause of stuttering is unknown, though historical theories ranged from physical abnormalities to brain abnormalities. Modern views consider it a neurologic disorder with genetic factors playing a significant role evidenced by twin and family studies showing a high genetic correlation. Research identifies genes on specific chromosomes linked to stuttering, though no conclusive genes have been pinpointed. Dopaminergic genes SLC6A3 and DRD2 have been associated with stuttering, supporting dopamine-related theories of the disorder. Stuttering resembles Tourette's syndrome in its onset, gender ratio, symptom fluctuation, and reaction to dopamine-related treatments. Some cases of stuttering may also be linked to pediatric autoimmune disorders associated with streptococcus infections PNDS. Rare cases of acquired stuttering in adulthood are related to medications and brain trauma. Brain imaging has revealed that people who stutter show decreased activity in language processing areas and dysfunctional activity in motor function areas like the basal ganglia. Spontaneous stuttering is linked to defects in the inner subcortical speech loop. Induced fluency techniques activate outer cortical speech loops, bypassing inactive striatal areas. Low striatum function in stuttering is linked to an overactive presynaptic dopamine system. Structural neuroimaging shows morphological changes in the brains of people who stutter, suggesting impaired feedforward control systems in the left hemisphere. Children who stutter have smaller left hemisphere tracts, while adults compensate with increased right hemisphere activity. Neural oscillations in adults who stutter show exaggerated fluctuations during speech preparation and execution. Gender differences in stuttering prevalence may be due to differences in brain connectivity, with boys showing decreased connectivity in key speech-related areas. Brain imaging studies, such as FDGPT scans, show abnormally low activity in speech cortical areas and high presynaptic dopamine activity in stuttering subjects. These findings highlight the overactive dopamine systems in people who stutter compared to fluent controls. Currently, no FDA-approved medications exist for stuttering. Dopamine-blocking medications have shown efficacy but are limited by side effects. Newer medications with novel mechanisms, like selective D1 antagonists, are promising in the pharmacologic treatment of stuttering. Early research in the 1980s indicated that first-generation dopamine antagonists could help with stuttering. However, these medications were often limited by their side effect profiles, 
prompting the exploration of new treatment avenues. Your support means the world to us. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more exciting content. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you for being part of our community.